Dude, S Block got the band throws, throwing shots in his tweets like he really want. Put my team on my back. Move my mama, yeah, I feel like I'm black. We on S-Block, too. S-Block 1500. And it's always like that. Wherever you from, you will get hated the most. You know, most rappers die in their own city. Man. It's a fact. You know, most rappers die in their own city. Man. It's a fact. Yeah, I'm about to bang on this. Yo, I'm about to bang on this car in front of the door, bro. I don't know who it is. He's not rolling his window. I'm about to bang on it. I'm about to shoot at this wheel in front of the door. He's not pulling his car down. He's not trying to tell me who it is. I'm about to flame this car up. No, this is not rolling his pop. But you understand what I'm saying? He on the phone. I just knocked on his window. I told him to roll the window down. He didn't say nothing, bro. Pop, he's double parked in front of the house. What's wrong with you? And I knocked on his door and I asked him, who are you looking for? He's talking about go ahead. He just told me to go ahead. Bro, I'm trying to tell you, bro. I'm trying to tell you, bro. Yo. I don't know. I don't know who this is in front of my door. I'm about to flame this nigga, bro. Like, I'm about to flame this car right now. I don't know what's up with cuz. Bro, bro, I'm asking you who you is. You're in front of my door, bro. It's shit going on out here, bro. I'm asking you a simple question, bro. I'm asking you. A, I don't know who you is, bro. What's up with you? Bro, this is my block. You just sitting there. I asked you a simple question, bro. You're not saying nothing, bro. You didn't say nothing, bro. This is my block. Shit going on around here, bro. That's why I asked you a question. No, it's not all white people that live on this block, bro. All right, go ahead, bro. Go ahead, bro. What do I? This nigga, man. I don't know what the f That's why I be thinking somebody be slipping on something or something sometimes. He don't make no sense. Fat G's was well known throughout Philly as he's been around for the better part of a decade on the rap scene and collaborated with Meek Mill, Core, and Lil Uzi Vert, among many others, pretty early on in his career. Fat G's was named by some as the next one up out of Philly around that time when he first came out in 2014 and 2015. In 2016, he dropped a song with Lil Uzi called Xanax and Percocets, and that was the last I really heard of him. With that being said, I'm years older than Fat G, so I wasn't really listening to him too much, too much. But he was cool. I always, always found him as an okay rapper. You know, I never had a problem with him. There's some people that you turn on, you be like, oh, they trash, turn that off. And Fat G's, you know, he was known to make a hit or two. But while Meek signed a Rick Ross and took off, and Uzi and producer Molly Raw skyrocketed to success, Fat G's. For some reason never really had the success he was looking for like i said i always found his music fine he could definitely spit but for some reason he never found his footing in the industry sometimes people said he sounded too much like me i've heard people accusing him of stealing uzi sound in the song guns down which was released in 2017 yeah. Jeez has always been around though in the Philly hip hop scene. Recently, he released a song called No Gun Zone. In the song, Fat G's rap. No gun zone. That's the only time when we become known. Yeah. Youngins out here killing like it's cool. So my youngins they get that fatty stay in school with it. Only time we on television is when we make the news with it. The lyrics are chilling and ironic. Fat G's has always been outspoken on the problem he sees on a daily basis growing up in such a broken set of circumstances. It looked like he was going to make a second try at music after a few years of inactivity. There would be long stretches throughout the last few years where you wouldn't hear much from G's. He recently came out in interviews talking about his mental health taking a hit the last few years due 
to dealing with the fallout with some of the things that were happening in his neighborhood. Of course, my 22nd district flash information found a shooting, 1220 East Taney, person North Taney. To a black male wearing a gray hoodie, seen inside of a silver sedan with silver hubcaps. Blood on Taney, approximately 15 to 20 minutes now. To the 22nd, 1220 North Taney, we have found a shooting, looking for a black male inside of a silver sedan with silver hubcaps. Wearing a gray hoodie, he was last seen down Taney. Time was approximately 15. Cars on my 22nd, first one to gun, 1220 North Taney Street. Coming in report of a shooting, rescue and route. That's being 22nd, first one to gun, 1220 North Taney Street. Coming in report of a shooting, no further info. On Sunday, March 17th, Philadelphia police officers responded to a call at 10 10 p.m. regarding an individual reportedly armed in the 1200 block of North Taney Street. Upon reaching the scene, they discovered Derek Gant, known as Fat Fat, or his stage name, Fat G's. G's was found with multiple gunshot wounds. Derek Gant was 28, and he was rushed to Penn Presbyterian Medical Center, but was pronounced dead shortly after arrival. Up the violence. Last night, he became the latest homicide victim in Philadelphia. 28-year-old Derek Gant, also known by his rap name, Fat G's, was gunned down on a Broy Town street on the same block where he lived with his family. Monday night, the big story on Action News is the investigation into the violent death of a young man who used his lyrics to spread a message of peace. Tonight, he's being remembered by his family, his community, and his fellow musicians. Action News reporter Annie McCormick, live for us now at police headquarters with more on the victim and what police are learning through the investigation, Annie. Yeah, and sorry, and Rick, that victim was shot multiple times right in front of his home. Police scooped him and rushed him to Penn Presbyterian Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. And today, homicide detectives are still working to figure out who is responsible. 28-year-old rapper Fat G's is remembered today in the music world. Meek Mill tweeted this about his untimely passing. Popular radio host Mina Say What Lona first interviewed him 10 years ago. Yo, bro, we're going back to the studio. It's just really heartbreaking that this man, this young man, was literally advocating against the census violence that ultimately he was the victim of. It was just last fall when he dropped this song, No Gun Zone, about curbing gun violence. His friends and family know him as 28-year-old Derek Gant. He was a good dude, you know. All oh, yesterday, we, we all together yesterday praying at the masjid all day. He doing his good deeds, trying to feed the homeless. 10 p.m. Sunday, right in front of his brewery town home in the 1200 block of North Taney Street, Gant was shot to death. At least a dozen shots were fired. His mother was inside. Today out front, his friends and family surrounded his imam. That's what, you know, the, one of the last things that, you know, he died doing, you know, mm -hmm. trying to repair the damage that yeah. sadly the culture's caused. Investigators have video of Gant speaking to someone in the passenger side of a vehicle on the street before the shots rang out. That vehicle then fled. At this hour, police have no arrests. Too many people are dying. Time for excuses. Derek Gant, or Fat G's, will be laid to rest today at his genazza in Germantown. May Allah grant him a spacious grave. In his last moments here on Earth, Fat G's was contemplating his safety. In a video released just two days after his death, G's is seen talking on the phone with someone he calls Pop. He says that there's a car parked a couple houses up the street and that he wasn't comfortable with the way that things were going. He says he already walked up to the car to check and see who it was, but was brushed off. An obviously frustrated G's tells the caller that he is so uncomfortable with this situation that he is contemplating going on the offensive. The car then pulls up in front of Jesus' house and Fat G's tells the person that he doesn't like the suspicious way that they were parked on the street. Fat G's goes in the house. This might have been the end of it for the moment, but against family advice, he goes back outside to argue some more. He might have went in the house to grab his gun, I don't know but he felt safe enough to argue with the man. I just asked you Huh? Bro, somebody shut you up. Bro, are you listening to what I'm saying, bro? Somebody hit my crib up before, bro. You sitting in front of my crib, bro. Hit his crib up. 
Yo! What is wrong with him? What the fuck? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Yo! Yeah. Yeah. There is a lot to learn from Fat G's and his life, but there is also a lot to learn from the way he died. Life is so precious and can be snatched from you at any time for any reason. Fat G was known for his wit, humor, his personality. He was known as a person who never really gave up on his goals. He loved his family. He loved his friends. He loved women. Anybody that knew him was, was touched by him in some way. People mostly talk about his humor and his, and his fiery personality and just, you know, sometimes he had a temper. Sometimes he would go off on you for no reason. Sometimes he'd just snap on you. But they say most of the time it'd be out of love. G's didn't have very many enemies in this world. But, uh, you know, this is Philly, so it really doesn't really matter. Like, sometimes you don't have to have no enemies. You can just talk to a person wrong or look at a person wrong or say the wrong thing to somebody. And for some reason, that people's first instinct is to shoot. Now, we don't know if this person was lurking and if he was there to, I mean, to do something to him already or if this was an argument that just that just happened spontaneously. My honest opinion from what G said and how paranoid he, he appeared to be on that video, it seemed like that person, he didn't recognize that person, didn't recognize the car. They was sitting there with the lights off. G said that they was on the phone when he walked up to the car and you know, he, they, they told him, I mean, to go ahead when, when he asked what's up with him. And that's what made him upset, you know? And he might've went in the house to grab his gun, like I said. I don't know, I don't know why he went in the house and came back out. I don't know why he came back outside, but that's what happened, that's what the video shows. I really do feel for his family. I can't imagine what they're going through at this moment. This is a big loss for Philly in general, but especially for, you know, obviously his family. It's hard to speak about these things so soon after they happened, but this was such big news in Philadelphia that everybody was talking about it. I just wanted to wait a couple days to see what happened. I'm not one of them people that's like, breaking news, I gotta cover it. I'm not I'm not a breaking news ball, but this was a big deal, you know. Everybody knew who Fat G's was. Everybody remember something about him, whether we remember his song with Mika, his song with Uzi, or his, you know, his, his freestyle on this beat or that beat, or his appearance at this concert, G Herbo would bring him out. Um, you know, everybody fucked with him really uh, in the music tip. Obviously, Poundside Pop and all that. Um, he got connections over there. You know, there's people with a lot of speculation about why he died. At this moment, the streets know, you know. The streets know what happened, and that's going to sort itself out. If somebody gets arrested for it, I'll be here to report that. But I'm not really in the business of speculation. You know, if I give you a story, I'm able to confirm it 100%. I'm able to say, look, this happened, and I know this happened. You know, obviously I make mistakes here and there, but you know, I'm only human. But what I'm saying is I don't know what happened here. So I'm not even gonna begin to, you know, give theories. Now there are plenty of theories. There are plenty of, you know, things that I think could have happened that might have had to do with this and do with that. But to publicly come on this channel and, 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 and speculate would be very irresponsible. So I'm gonna lay off that. Bad G's definitely will be missed. Uh, I will re I'm gonna repeat that because you know, people from outside of Philadelphia might not realize why this is a big deal. Fat G is one of them people that's, that's always just around. He's always around. Like I said very early on, uh, Uzi and Meek both recognized his talent, both did songs with him. For whatever reason, his career just didn't take off. And uh, it's a shame, you know, he wanted it. He wanted it so bad. That's all Fat G's wanted was to be a rapper, you know? He wanted that shit bad. But yeah, this, like I said, it's definitely a big loss for Philly. Um, my condolences just go out to the family. I don't know what to say. Like, this, I, I, it's only so many times you can say things like, put them guns down or stop the violence. Or da, 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 da. But people going to do what they do. I, I, You know, I'll do what I can do behind the scenes. I, you know, maybe one day I'll talk about what I do behind the scenes on this channel, but... I can do what I can do as, as one person, but collectively, we got to figure out something.
to do here because we can't just keep taking loss at the loss at the loss at the loss like this you know people die every day i can only cover so much i cover mainly rappers on this channel so you know people get killed almost every day in the city of philadelphia and like i said i mean i can come on here and report on every death but that i think would just be outrageous uh to try to cover that as one person um but yeah, like I said, man, rest in peace, Bad G's, Eric Gant, my condolences go out to your family once again, and man, I, ho I hope y'all can make it through this tough time, I know it's the month of Ramadan, this is the holy month, this is the month that uh, a lot of Muslims take very seriously, most Muslims take very seriously, I should say, and Bad G's was a devout Muslim, you can see the prostration mark on his forehead, um, you know that man was praying so he now answers to a law and moves on in this life and rest in peace to that man I'ma leave it there for now thank you for watching American Confidential until next time be safe Derek Gant, who went by the rap name Fat Cheese, was shot several times last night in Brewery Town. CBS Philadelphia reporter Kerry Carrado spoke with his family tonight. The family of the young rapper says they just want to know why. They say he just released a song called No Gun Zone in hopes to help stop the gun violence in the city. Now you have a whole family that's just broken. He, they took something away from us that was valuable. The family of Derek Gant, also known as rapper Fat G's, says they are a close-knit family. They gave us this picture, and while they are devastated at his loss, they remember the endless times he brought a smile to their faces. He had a heart of gold. The biggest smile, the biggest hug, the biggest kiss, you know? He's a very, very genuine cousin. Just to grow up in the streets of Philadelphia and dare to be different is who he was. He took a chance on his own self when nobody else would. Police say Gant was shot and killed Sunday night on the 1200 block of Taney Street. They say they are still searching for the person responsible. And justice will be served. This is the holiest month of Ramadan. He was Muslim. So we know that he's in paradise. But when it comes down to it, we still are left here to, in grief, in shock, and disbelief. How dare you? How can you go to sleep at night knowing that you did that to somebody senselessly? His cousin read the words from his newly released song, No Gun Zone. Got your mama mourning why they do her son wrong. Hate to see you on the ground with all that blood going. And to read those words, and to experience it, it hurt. It's not fair, you know. We gonna grieve, we gonna mourn. And we mourn for all of the other young men in the community as well. Not just us, not just our family. The family says they will lean on each other and their strong values as they move forward. We keep that same love. We keep that same compassion, that same dignity, that same respect for others. We keep that there, but we don't forget. Kerry Corrado, CBS News, Philadelphia.